Isaiah. The Spirit of the God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mando of praise instead of faint spirit, but you shall be called the priest of the Lord. Men shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm response I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord.
somo la pili somo katika kitabu cha ufunuo wa mtakatifu Yohane neema za bwana neema na amani ziwe nanyi kutoka kwa Yesu Kristo shahidi mwaminifu mzaliwa wa kwanza wa wafu na mkuu wa wafalme wa dunia yeye anatupenda na ametufutia dhambi zetu kwa damu yake ametufanya kuwa ufalme tena makuhani kwa Mungu aliye baba yake yeye astahili utukufu na mamlaka daima na milele amina tazameni anakuja kati ya mawingu kila jicho litamuona hata wale walio mtoboa na makabila yote ya dunia yataomboleza kwa sababu yake naam amina mimi ndimi alfa na omega mwanzo na mwisho asema bwana Mungu aliyeko aliyekuwako na anayekuja mwenyezi neno la Mungu amenituma kuahubiria maskini habari njema wakati ule Yesu alirundi na sareti ndiko alikolelewa na siku ya sapato ikaingia katika sinagogi kama ilivyokuwa desturi yake akasimama asome wakampa kitabu cha nabii Isaya akakifungua akakuta mahali palipo andikwa Roho wa Bwana yuju yangu kwa maana amenipaka mafuta niwahubirie maskini habari jema 
amenituma kuwatangazia wafungwa kufunguliwa vipofu kuona tena kuwaletea wafungwa uhuru na kutangaza mwaka uliokubalika kwa Bwana akakifungua kitabu akakifunga kitabu akamrudishia mtumishi akaketi na macho ya wote katika sinagogi yakamkazia yeye akaanza kuwaambia leo andiko hili limetimia masikioni mwenu injili ya bwana The first reading we heard today comes from the book of Isaiah, one of the prophets. And it comes back, you have heard it in the Gospel of today, Gospel of Luke, where that same reading is quoted as being read by Jesus there in the synagogue in Nazareth, where he had grown up. Sometimes people think that Jesus had like intentionally looked for that reading like before, like what a priest does, at least that's what I expect you would do, that before Holy Mass at least you look through the readings so that you know what is happening. And so the idea is that Jesus did the same. He was going through the role of the prophet Isaiah and then found this passage, chapter 6, and started to read it. And actually that's not the case. Because the Jewish religion, a bit like the Catholics and also the Protestants, have their own schedule of readings. And so when Jesus came into the synagogue, it was that day that this reading of Nebi Isaiah was read. And actually, from there we can even determine more or less in which time of the year it was. Most probably, end of September, beginning of October. Around the feast of Rosh Hashanah, with the Jews. That is the new year. Jews were about to celebrate the new year or had celebrated already. And then this reading comes to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. So, so to say, it's a way of encouraging the people. And actually, when Josiah was writing this, Josiah lived in the time of the Jews coming out of the exile. They had come back from what is nowadays Iraq and Iran, and they were coming back to the Holy Land from which they had been expelled some 50, 60 years before, and they had been trying to rebuild the temple and it didn't work. They were not able to manage it. The Jews who had such big dreams are now we're going to rebuild the temple and everything will be okay. After 10, 15 years, they were still sitting there in Jerusalem in sack and ashes, had still not produced what they wanted to produce, still not build up what they wanted to build. And it is Isaiah who wants to console his people 
to bring good tidings, he says, to the afflicted, to bind up the ones who are brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those who are bound. Basically, this whole reading is about building something up. As priests, they always want to build up something. Many parish priests, they will, so to say, measure the success in their, parents, in their parish according to what they were really able to build in constructions. A school, a chapel, a clinic, so that you leave, so to say, a legacy for your successor that you can show off. And then we put a plaque there, Father so-and-so built this church or opened this school. That is many times the way we priests want to be active in a parish. But if you read carefully through the prophet of Josiah and also through the life of Christ himself, Christ himself didn't build anything. He didn't build even one building. But what he wanted to build up was people. He wanted to encourage people to bring good tidings to the afflicted, to bind up the brokenhearted, liberty to the captives, opening of prison to those who are bound. That is what Isaiah was about. That is what his Christ is about. And as a priest, as we are seated, seated here, you might have to ask yourself, it's like a kind of an exam for yourself, how many times did you give good tidings to the afflicted? How many times did you bind up the broken-hearted? How many times were you able to free people from their captivity? How many times were you able to open the prison of people's hearts? Because God will measure you according to those actions, not so much on what you have built, like for example this beautiful cathedral, beautiful as it is, but God will not judge you according to your buildings, but what you have done for the least of his brothers and sisters. As we are seated, seated here today, in a sense it's very much about a new year. We go from promise to promise. We have a lot of religious here, they do the same. You have the renewal of your religious vows. So also the priests have the renewal of their priestly promises. And maybe of our married people here, maybe they do it even every year, like in the privacy of their home or in their hearts, they renew their matrimonial vows to each other. If you look back on this last year, from last year 2023, how did it go? What happened in your life last year? And you don't have to tell me, but even without knowing you, I can tell you the world. There was light and there was darkness. There was success and there was defeat. There was happiness and there was sadness. There was energy and joy and there was tiredness and depression. In many ways, of course, not only as priests are we called to give good tidings to the afflicted and to bind up the broken-hearted, liberty for the captives, open the prisons, but in many ways we ourselves are very much in need of those same actions. Many times we selves are the faint-hearted, the faint of spirit, the ones who struggle through life. And if you belong to them, yes, then that reading for you is also for you today. I raise my hand. I'm a faint in spirit. At times I am afflicted. Yes, and at times I'm very broken-hearted, 
and sometimes, yes, I'm just sad and in a depression, and sometimes I am defeated, and sometimes I do not manage, and sometimes I ask myself, dear bird, how am I ever going to resolve the problems in which I maneuvered myself into? If you belong to my club, raise your hand. Who dares to raise his hand with me to say that he is tired? Raise your hand, cowards. Who is able to raise his hand? Who is able to raise his hand? Who is able to raise his hand? Children, can you raise your hand with me? Raise your hand. Yes, because the praise of God comes from children, isn't it? That is a lesson for you. Remember, remember, remember your own weaknesses, remember your own depression, remember your own darkness in order that God can truly heal you. Life is a struggle. Life is a struggle not only for priests but even for religious. Religious know that very well. And also, of course, for people who are in their relationships, in their marriage, in their families. How much of sacrifice and pain is not going through a relationship? How many times do you not feel inadequate? How many times do you not feel maybe at night that you really would like to give up? That grace of God is for you, for the faint-hearted for the faint of spirit, for the afflicted, for those who do not know how to continue. Like the people of Israel 2,000 years ago for whom this particular passage was written, even for us it happens again and again and over and again. And Christ came for us. Christ came not, as he said himself, didn't come for the healthy. He came for the sick. I would nearly like to say, if you really want to be with Christ, you have to confess your sickness. Because otherwise, if that would not be the case, then, well, yet yeah, Christ died in vain. Because for you, he did not need to die. Because you are perfect already have no need of his redemption. Christ comes for the sick, doesn't come for the healthy. Christ comes to build up, comes to build up his church. And as I mentioned, that building up is not first and foremost through stones and mortar and timber, but that building up of the church and of the kingdom of God in general comes through his life. Christ who gives his life for us. And we, priests, as we are present here today, we have been chosen in a special way to be channels, so to say, of that grace of God. He wants to build his church through us. Not so much through our managerial skills, not so much because we are so good in organizing our family days and collecting money, but much more through preaching the Word of God and celebrating the sacraments, the Eucharist and the first and foremost. We are all priests. By the way, not only here, this group, dressed in white chasubles, but all of us, in a sense, share in that priesthood, the common priesthood. In fact, coming to think of it, even we priests would not be priests without a common priesthood. Think of your own way to vocation. Think of your parents who brought you up. 
and who already as a little boy, a baby, brought you to baptism, wanted you to be a Christian. Today is also a moment of grace and of thanksgiving for all those people around you sharing in that common priesthood who helped you to become a priest as you sit here today. Think of your parents and today you pray for them, your father, your mother. And just try to imagine for yourself how they took that decision to take you to church, to baptize you. Had it not been because of them, you would not sit here today. But then there are so many others in your life without whom you probably would not be here today. Maybe it was your teacher at school, or maybe it was a friend, or maybe it was a religious, or maybe it was, yes, your parish priest, or another priest whom was for you a source of inspiration. People who lived their lives in an exemplary way, in such a way that you were so inspired that you decided, yes, I want to be a priest. Yes, I want to give my life for Christ. But you may also turn it the other way around. If you look in your own priestly life, could you mention maybe or call into your mind the faces or the names of those of whom you came to know that they were inspired by your life? Men and women, boys and girls, who maybe were inspired by you and decided, yes, I want to follow Christ more closely. Or maybe once again, you yourself are inspired even today by others, your colleague priest or friends, a couple, a married couple. Because let's face it, many times the lay people live their Christian life better than many priests does. how important it is to have the right friends in life. How important it is to even have a discernment there again and to see what comes from God, what helps you in growing closer to Him. All that is common priesthood. It has very little to do with sacraments, but it has to do with life itself. How do you live your life? And the legacy is not so much about the buildings you leave behind, but as it happens many times, thanks be to God and parishes, and you yourself must have experienced it, you come into a parish, and the people are still speaking about this other parish priest before you who left such a deep mark on the people. who had such an inspired life that still people were talking about it 10, 15 years after that, about that one priest. And sometimes even for you or even for me, it might be hard to hear because, of course, we are all a bit competitive and in one way or another you would like to do better. But there are those priests who, in their simplicity of life, Maybe they didn't produce very much. But in their simplicity of life, became a source of inspiration. Common priesthood. And it is on that common priesthood, on that call to holiness of life, that Christ builds, in a sense, and inspires, on the other hand, the ministerial priesthood, the sacramental priesthood, as we celebrate it today in a special way. 
men and women, bring their children for baptism, bring their children for confirmation. Grown up people, they come to the church to give to each other the sacrament of matrimony. People want to be encouraged in the Eucharist, want to receive the body in Christ in order that they can live better their Christian lives. All there is where the ministerial priesthood comes in to support those who live in the world. Priests is very much about reconciliation. We all know that the Pope, he is called the pontiff, the supreme pontiff, as we say, supreme, the, Allah, the highest, like the supreme court. You have the supreme pontiff, the highest pontiff. In a sense, that means there are also lower pontiffs. In fact, you could say that each and every priest is a pontiff in the sense of the Latin word as it goes, pontifex, the one who builds the bridge. There we go again, it's about building. But the building of the bridge is not, let me build a nice bridge in this village so that people cross the river. But it is the building of the bridge between heaven and earth. A bit like that dream of Jacob, of the ladder with the angels going up and down between heaven and earth. So also the priests need to be that pontifex, that pontiff, that bridge between heaven and earth. And first and foremost, he does it here at the altar. It is here at the altar where each and every time again we build that bridge. It is here at the altar that each and every time again the ladder comes down, so to say, from heaven, and the angels go up and down. And maybe it is also therefore at the beginning of the Eucharistic that we sing, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, which is the song of the angels in heaven. The angels that descend here in order that heaven comes to earth and earth comes to heaven. And you as a priest have the role of mediator, of pontifex, of bridge builder, of bringing people closer to God and, yes, also God closer to people. At times we forget that, and Pope Francis has mentioned it a number of times, we as priests, we need to pray to God that he shows mercy on his people. Many times people will ask us, Father, please pray for me. And how many times do you actually do that? How many times do you actually, with all your mind and all your heart and all your strength, how many times do you pray for your people? How serious do you take that role, that office of being a bridge builder. Christ is building his church through you. Imagine, not anybody else, through you, very personally. He has committed that construction of the temple of God into your hands. What an election but also what a responsibility that not is. And maybe even what a burden. The burden of the cross. We are just now entering into these days of passion and we hear it tonight, we see it tomorrow, how heavy that cross can be. And how even Christ himself fell not once, not twice, but thrice under the cross. By the way, the, the question is not so much that you fell. The question is much more, did you get up? Are you able to continue? Maybe, by the way, that was the big difference between Judas and Simon Peter. 
Judas who betrayed his Lord and could not believe in mercy anymore. He just could not believe that God would still forgive him because of that, and therefore he went out and hanged himself. While Simon Peter, who basically did the same thing, I do not know this man, but you from Galilee, you have the same accent. Well, I, I don't know him. But Peter went out and cried bitterly because he understood his own weakness and those struggling returned to the Lord. And yes, Jesus had to ask him, and we will hear it after Easter once again, Peter, do you love me more than these? Do you love me? That's what he will ask us each and every time again. It's true for us, priests, but of course for all of us. Each and every time again, there is a way back to him. But also each and every time again, he will ask you, yeah, but how is that with your love for me? Do you truly love me? Holy Thursday. Renewal of priestly promises. A commitment to renew. A commitment. A promise you make. Do you really love him? How much are you ready to give? What is it you want to give? And if Christ would come to take you here and now, today, what do you think his judgment over you would be? Would he say, come and enter into my kingdom? Or would it be, turn back Satan away from me? Let us then renew our commitments today in a God who has chosen us in a special way to build up the kingdom of God through his grace, not so much through our efforts, not so much through our strength and force and energy, but much more working with our weaknesses, working with our faint spirit, working with our broken hearts. He breaks his heart for us in order that our hearts would be healed, in order that we would end in the joy of being a disciple of Christ and give our lives to him. And maybe today also in a special way, I would say, as we, after the renewal of promises, we celebrate the Eucharist, I would like to invite you to make this kind of very special spiritual exercise, which basically we would have to do each and every time again we celebrate the Eucharist, that when we repeat after Christ the words of the consecration, this is my body. This is my blood. That we actually can put our own body on that altar and give our own blood into that chalice so that it get mixed, so to say, his grace for me my life for him, an exchange of gifts, his body for me, my body for him, his blood poured out, my blood for him. And even if you hesitate, just try each and every time again, and God's grace will be with us. Amen.
kwa sasa mapadri watafanya upya ahadi zao za upadrisho mapadri naomba usimame wote mapadri Bilo Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, I resolve to renew in the presence of the bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made. I resolve to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. I am. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls? I am. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon him and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me, that I may faithful be, be faithful to the apostolic office, entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ, gracious Ray, hear us. May the Lord keeps us all, keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Amen. I,
This is that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by a wondrous design we're pleased to decree and that, that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, 
which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our, our Pope, with Anthony, our apostolic ministrate, and all those who are holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cladis, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, let us pray, therefore, Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he drew bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, able the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, 
who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and always sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also you are servant, though sinners, hope in the abundant masses, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Macerinus, Peter, Felicity, Papeshua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into the company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them and fill them with life. Bless them and bestow them on us. We will now have the blessing of the oil of the sea. Simami. Lord, loving Father, you bring healing to the sick through your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear us as we pray to you in faith and send the Holy Spirit, man's helper and friend upon this oil, which nature has provided to serve the needs of men. May your blessing come upon all who are anointed with this oil, that they may be freed from pain and illness and made well again in body and mind and soul. Father, may this oil be blessed for our use in the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us have each other the sign of peace. Good dog, hey, uh.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
na ombi kuigia liwaru wa mawevi ya makwa Niguo ni vite ndika na soke kuivi ya Na angiro lero na angangu ya rasi ya kuidhana Ngisi ya gira gitara ni unangoroli Na angiri dika na megambo ya gira likithule tindavindi Akuidete yesu mwera hati Ni madhe sile njara na nyadirisi ya kwa Na magitara mabindi maku wa mwonze mwa yesu Mwili wa Yesu mboni, nzaka mea Yesu nyumirie, maji mamba usi ya Yesu mandandie, itandiro ya Yesu lengine, Yesu mwela ondigwe, ondide ngura rari siyaku, dukande kie vingo siyonde, mbarari ya saitani undedie, ikwero lili yako ombite waku, butidi yangu kinyere ngu gathage na adhule yaku, Maganari monde mami haka nigu tuye kegu Ivo elea guite kera Yesu Suki ya muadha niwe ya adhi wako wa onde Suki ya giridi kana uge na wengi wako wa onde Oki oki ni na kene yo wane ngedire Nani ya ningu kusa ukedi ya ngiti kera wendi wako Nige edha omba lewe mwene na wendi wako Nye ningu kwiti ya utangiri na ruendoro wako wike Ni na siyo ni nega ni andibate irani kindu kingi Ara okumweza na mwana na mwumudheru Ara okumweza na mwana na mwumudheru Ara okumweza na mwana na mwumudheru Tusimame kwa sala Let us pray we beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Masasa mwashama mwashamu makishaba mtakatifu atabariki mafuta ya wakate kumeni. Lord, Lord, go, go, Lord God, protect of all who believe in you. Bless this oil and give wisdom and strength to all who are anointed with it. In preparation for their baptism, bring them to a deeper understanding of the gospel. Help them to accept the challenges of Christian living and lead them to the joy of new birth in the family of your church. Who we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us, let us then pray that God, our Almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation.
God our Maker, source of all growth and holiness, accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your Church. In the beginning, at your command, the, the earth produced fruit-bearing trees. From the fruit of the, ol fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy chrism. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the oil would bring in the sacraments of your love. After the avenging floods, the dove returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men, and by the anointing with olive oil, you make us radiant with your joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water, and your servant Moses, his brother, anointed him priest. This too foreshadowed greater things to come. After your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, asked John for baptism in the waters of Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon him in the form of a dove, and by the witness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only well-beloved son. In this you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this all you have created. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ your Son. It is from him that chrism takes its name, and with chrism you have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. Make this chrism a sign of life and salvation for those who are to be born again in the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful aid Adam. And when they are anointed with the holy oil, make them temples of your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through this sign of chrism, grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic honor, and clothe them with incorruption. Let this be indeed the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share eternal life in the glory of your kingdom, we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Namba tukai kumatangazo machache. Kwanza, baada ya baraka za mwisho, tutaongozo waka msafara na wanawabemba mafuta. Tuna mapadri wa tatu, padre Lucas, padre Livio, na padre Anselin, wa kutukawia mafuta, tufuate utaratibu muema. Tumalikuwa sisi wote kwa chakula cha mchana, mapadri na watawa, watapukea cha mcha, pale kunako ofisi zetu. Wengine wa kristu, utapukea cha mcha, kule kwa jukwa. Wakati kupokea chamcha watawa mtoae barua za mashirika yenu. Tusimame kwa baraka. Before you bow your heads, <laughs> let me say a word. Because <laughs> otherwise you might get a stiff neck. No, I would just like to express my gratitude towards the Vicar General and also through him to Archbishop uh, Anthony Moheria, the, Arch the Apostolic Administrator of Embu, who invited me to come to preside this Holy Eucharist with you, with you this morning. For me, that was a special privilege, because normally a nuncio doesn't do that. I am not a diocesan bishop, and normally these kind of uh, rituals and liturgy is celebrated, of course, by the diocesan bishop. But as at the moment you have a vacant diocese, and uh, the apostolic administrator had to be in uh, Neri, 
So I had the opportunity to be with you here today to share with you in this beautiful liturgy and to receive this beautiful grace of Christ of not only renewing our uh, priestly commitment but also to be present at the blessings of these holy oils which stand as we heard also in the prayers of today which stand for Christ himself Christos the anointed one it means and therefore also we have these holy oils who in their different shapes and colors do remind us of the presence of Christ who himself is the anointed one the priest king and prophet so once again thank you very much for your kind hospitality for coming here this morning also for the children who have been here this morning I know it's all a bit very long but you managed very well so thank you very much also for being here this morning with us and all you people good people of Embu keep on praying for new bishop of Embu who then I hope will arrive soon with the grace of God and with that <laughs> Bow your hands and pray for God's blessings. May God, the Father of mercies, who has given you an example of love and the passion of his only begotten Son, grant that by serving God and your neighbor, you may lay hold of the wondrous gift of his blessing. Amen. So that you may receive the reward of everlasting life from him, through whose earthly death you believe that you escape eternal death. Amen. And by following the example of his self-abasement, may you possess a share in his resurrection. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Oh, in peace, the Mass is ended. Yesu Kristo mpendo mtazamaji wa Caputin TV imekuwa ibada takatifu ya misa alhamisi ya asubuhi ambayo imeongozwa na mhashamu askofu mkuu Bart Van Megen ambaye ni mwakilishi wa baba mtakatifu hapa nchini Kenya ameongoza kwenye katedrali ya watakatifu Petro na Paulo Embu mjini Jimbo Katoliki la Embu kwa niaba ya mjumbe wa baba mtakatifu wa msimamizi wa jimbo hili aliyeteuliwa baada ya askofu aliyekuwa askofu wa jimbo hili kuhamishiwa jimbo 
Katoliki la wote. Imekuwa ni ibada kabisa ambayo katika ibada hiyo yamebarikiwa mafuta ya wakatekumeni, yamebarikiwa mafuta ya mpako wa wagonjwa na kuwekwa wakfu mafuta ya krisma takatifu ambayo yatatumika katika sakramenti ama maadhimisho ya sakramenti kuanzia baada ya pasaka hii ni ibada ambayo imehudhuriwa na au wengi miongoni mwao ni watawa na mapadre wote ambao wanahudumu katika hili jimbo la embu wengi ambao wanafanya kazi hapa na wachache ambao wanafanya kazi katika maeneo mengine ya nchi yetu kulingana na vile ambavyo wametumwa pamoja nao pia ni wanafunzi wa shule ambayo imemilikiwa na kanisa la katoliki hapa kwenye jimbo katoliki la embu baada ya ibada hii ya mchana basi jioni ni ibada ya karamu ya bwana ambapo ilianzishwa sakramenti ya ekaristi na ambapo pia tunakumbuka uh, kutawadha miguu Yesu na baadaye tunakumbuka kwamba ni amri ya upendo ndo aliyoitoa basi kwa niaba ya wote waliofanikisha matangazo haya moja kwa moja uh, vijana waliosimama na kuketi masaa marefu tunakurudisha kule studioni kwa maendeleo ya ibada ama maendeleo ya vipindi kama ilivyoratibiwa kwa niaba ya wote Mungu akubariki na kukulinda mimi ni ndugu Mfransisko Mkapuchini Peter Waweru uwe na mchana mwema na pasaka yenye baraka